Welcome to STEPS, a staff training program run by the Office of Graduate Research at Flinders University. Hello, my name's Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University, and it's my great pleasure to present this next moment in our STEP program, our PhD professional development program for supervisors at Flinders University. And this particular step program is titled 10 Drafts to Submission. And yes, I probably knew this one was going to be one of the big requests from colleagues at Flinders because we have a core program at Flinders where supervisors must go through core one and yes, core two before they're remotely led anywhere near students. And then we have a whole series of electives where colleagues can select the areas that are particularly of use to them at their stage of career, their discipline and so forth. And during that core session, I discussed my protocol, my way in which I get students through quickly, particularly focusing on getting them through for three years. And one of my techniques to do this is 10 drafts to submission. So let me tell you what this is about. When a student presents for me their first full draft, I take students through 10 iterations of drafts from that point. It is a predictable, it's a planned, and it's a very calm process that allows students and supervisors to exchange drafts at this late stage of the process to reduce stress and also improve the quality of the thesis really, really quickly. So this, as a model, works incredibly well. So let me tell you how I developed this 10 drafts to submission. In my late 20s, I supervised my first five PhD completions and four finished in under three years. Great stuff but the fifth finished in three years, six months. Now, she should have finished in three years, but something very odd happened. She was brilliant. She had first-class honours. She was on scholarship, and she had progressed incredibly well with her thesis. She only had the introduction left to write, and she was enrolled for two years, nine months. So I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. Off we go. But then at two years, nine months, with the intro left to write, she completely freaked out, and the fear of finishing simply became too much for her. And also her best friend, through her degree, who wasn't on scholarship and didn't have first class honours, was doing incredibly well and in fact intellectually jumped beyond her during the PhD. So I think some of that fear was triggered by competitiveness. And it took, unbelievably, nine months to write that introduction. She kept producing a really, really substandard document and we ended up getting something from her but the examiners passed it with minor corrections, that is a B or a 2. And of course the minor corrections being you can fill the sentence in for me, you need to fix the introduction. <laughs> so after that case where emotions were clearly getting the way of a completion, I really wanted to implement a system or a strategy or a template to impose over those final emotionally charged stages of the PhD. I wanted to find a way to remove or at least to shelve emotions and focus on the process to improve the thesis. And that became the 10 drafts to submission. And that, of course, was a completely arbitrary number. But there is no doubt that it is empowering for a student, it's empowering for a supervisor, that we all see 10 drafts completed in 10 weeks, and then you can submit. And we need to remember that we are dealing with really tired staff and really tired students. So with 10 drafts in 10 weeks, all of us can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So each draft involves reading the entire thesis with tracked changes. The supervisor reads it, offers tracked changes, the student makes the changes and those corrections, returns it to the supervisor. And this happens 10 times. Besides reading the full draft, each draft looks for a different deal-breaker correction. So firstly, think about how you would like the final two months of your student's candidature to look like. Noting that your students will be emotional and tired, and hell, you'll be emotional and tired. So if there's anything in this system that I'm about to present that may be of value, I'm going to talk through these 10 drafting cycles now to show you how this focus can enhance the work and quickly. So draft one, I evaluate the structure. This is what I call a deal breaker draft. The first edit assesses if the structure is working. Does one chapter lead to the next? Does the argument hold together? This is the most important edit. 
form follows function, and of course structure follows argument. Draft two, assess the thesis statement. Is the argument consistent and signposted throughout the document? So yes, this is another deal breaker draft. This is the nature of the first three or four All of them are deal breakers. If you reveal these errors, the thesis won't get through. So deal breaker, what is your thesis statement? What is your original contribution to knowledge? What are your research questions? Ensure that every chapter works with your thesis statement and or the research questions. So make sure the links are in place, that the research questions are actually answered and the case for originality is made, not assumed. Okay, so draft three, let's all have a look at the abstract, the introduction and the conclusion. Do they frame the argument? This draft, again, a deal breaker correction, looks at the research frame. The abstract is, of course, everything. A strong abstract makes an examiner happy and students never recover from a dodgy abstract. The introduction and the conclusion, absolutely crucial. If your introduction and conclusion are weak, the best result you can hope for is a major corrections, that is a C or a 3, and you may get asked to do a restructure if you've got a stroppy examiner. So independently read, student and supervisor, the abstract, the introduction and the conclusion, and make sure they hang together. Draft 4. Go through the references and bibliography. Most examiners start reading at the back of the document. So what are their first impressions? Are there wider problems? Are the sources dated? Are some sources overused? So yes, by draft four, we are still in deal breaker land. If this doesn't exist, the thesis will fail. So references, bibliographies are evaluated. And when I examine, for example, I spend two full days, often a weekend, checking the references in the bibliography. So we always have to remember that examiners start reading at the back. We read the reference list, we read the bibliography first. A bibliography is a proxy for a student's academic literacies. Therefore, every minute that a student spends on references is, hello, a worthwhile minute. If I see a dodgy bibliography, that is really the foundation of a fail for me. I start there. So therefore, as supervisors, we have to make sure that the references and the reference list are correct. Draft five. Now we start to get into the interesting moment. By this point on a good day, theses start to pass. So draft five. Determine the weakest area of the thesis. That may be a poor chapter, inattention to a particular concept or theory, awkward transitions or dated references. So find what is the lowest hanging fruit, the weakest area, and lift that up. So this is the key moment in the 10 drafts. And if this correction is made well, then you really have a fighting chance of passing from this point. So supervisors need to really have a sense of the entirety of the thesis and locate what is the weakest component. It may be a dodgy chapter. Most frequently, it's one chapter that is weaker than the rest. But it could be a concept that's never quite nailed down, poor movement between chapters or dated references. So for students, they have to go through and correct that problem. And once that's in place, they have a fighting chance of passing. The last few drafts from this point, therefore, the goal is to move the students from major to minor corrections, and perhaps a clean examination, an A. So moving students from a C to a B to an A, a 3 to a 2 to a 1. So draft 6, highlight the original contribution to knowledge throughout the doctorate. Now we're selling the students' research, we're promoting the research, and I need the students to sell their originality because the difference between a master's and a PhD is that originality. A master's synthesizes knowledge, a doctorate creates original knowledge. They are very, very different. So we need to really, really make sure that the abstract introduction conclusion in each of the chapters explains overtly how the student has created an original contribution to knowledge. Draft seven... (laughs) Oh dear. Attention to spelling and grammar. This is crucial. Credibility is carried by a student's writing, regardless of the discipline. And if writing is clumsy, ill-drafted, featuring spelling mistakes, the credibility of the student is simply lost. So think about it. An examiner is spending four, five, six days of his or her life reading a thesis, and a student hasn't bothered to check spelling. Now, Some examiners may be cool about that. I'm not, 
Most I know are not because it's disrespectful. So make sure that silly errors are corrected. And put a spelling check through it. I'm embarrassed to say that every single student that I do these drafts for, the first thing I do when I get the draft is I put a spelling checker through my students' work. Now, if you'd told me 10 years ago that it would have been necessary for me to put a spelling checker through students' work because they've given a draft to a supervisor with spelling errors, I would have thought you were mad. But having said that, I'm now seeing students attempt to present a thesis to examiners with spelling errors, so don't do it. Draft eight, nice one, focus on paragraphing. The best of writing is like a waterfall, so that means we don't really see the gaps, we don't see the jumps, everything's flowing and moving, it's graceful. So the eighth draft that I do with students is I assess the movement between paragraphs, that is the transitions, to make sure that the argument progresses with fluidity, with consciousness, and yes, predictability. Draft nine, monitor the engagement with quotations and the prose around references. Ensure there is a fluid movement between ideas. So nine focuses on how the quotations or the references are placed in the thesis. Are they clunky? Are they thrown in? Now, in some disciplines, of course, quotes are rarely used. So therefore, we have to, as supervisors, check that the paraphrasing is actually paraphrasing and not plagiarism by another name. Further, I also focus a lot of attention on the interpretation of research. So if a, a, your discipline, say, uses quotations, then I have a rule in place. For every sentence of quotation, I require three from the student in interpretation. So references and quotations must never be a replacement for a student's interpretation because we are looking for an original contribution to knowledge beyond synthesis. Here we go. Draft 10. The examination draft. Read every sentence underlined with a ruler. Every inaccuracy that is corrected at this stage gives the thesis a better chance of passing with minor or no corrections. So as the supervisor, I conduct the last draft as if I am an examiner. I pretend that I'm no longer the student's supervisor and I'm much harder on them. This is the final check. This is the draft that's going to get through. And I have to make the student ensure that their last draft has been read carefully. Every word, every sentence, every line is checked. I also try to defamiliarize my relationship and the student's relationship with the prose because obviously we've read it over and over again. So for this examiner's read, I often print it out. I work on paper and I read it with a ruler to focus eyes and focus mind in a different way. So if we move through these 10 drafts and focus on each of these functions that I've described, we will reduce the stress and the emotion on students. Every doctoral candidate has a few days in three years where one thoughtless, ill-judged email or telephone call can trigger a withdrawal from a degree. Our role as supervisors is to keep students thinking and keep them writing. And these 10 drafts provide a really stable structure of support in the challenging final weeks. It's really hard yakka for the student. It's really hard yakka for the supervisor. And certainly I have weeks in my years where four of my students are completing just about at the same time. And so I'm reading 400, 500,000 words a week for 10 weeks. It's tough, but it is important. And I would argue it saves a lot of time going forward. Very, very important because it reduces the stress on the student. So they do finish in 10 weeks rather than suddenly 10 weeks becoming three months, becoming six months. Thank you for your time. And I hope the 10 drafts to completion are useful to you. Thank you for listening to this STEPS training program on behalf of the Office of Graduate Research at Flinders University.